Welcome everyone. So, in this lecture I will continue uh, with, with uh, examples and we will also see some properties of uh, basic properties of Lie algebras. So, in the last lecture I defined uh, what is Lie algebra and we also saw uh, an important example that is GLN of C that is called the general linear Lie algebra. So, let us uh, recall the definition. So, GLN of C as a vector space it is M n of C and the bracket is nothing but the commutator bracket. So, bracket of a b is a b minus b a for all a b in g l n of c. Okay. So, this was the first example that we saw. So, now here is the one uh, trivial example. Okay. So, let v be a vector space over complex numbers. So, then define the Lie bracket to be a trivial bracket on capital V. So, what, what does it mean? You just assume bracket of any two elements are 0. So, then that will define Lie algebra structure on capital V. Okay. So, define bracket x y be 0 for all x y in V. Okay. So, this is called uh, trivial bracket or product and uh, with respect to this V with this bracket is called abelian Lie algebra. Okay. So, this is a trivial bracket on capital V that, that gives us abelian Lie algebra. For example, you can take complex numbers and define the bracket to be 0 for all elements in, uh, in that complex numbers. So, that is going to give you this abelian Lie algebra structure on complex numbers which is actually one dimensional abelian Lie algebra. Even if you use the algebra structure on complex numbers, the commutator of that will be 0. So, so the Lie algebra structure coming from this algebra structure, associative algebra structure on complex numbers also gives you abelian Lie algebra. So, here are some uh, non-trivial examples, so which will be again recalled throughout this uh, course. Okay. So, one should be very comfortable with these examples. So, here is the very first example okay, uh, which is actually a subalgebra of this GLN C. Okay. So, let me uh, define what is subalgebra then I will give you this example. So, let us say G a Lie algebra over complex numbers. So, now what is a subalgebra of G? Subalgebra means Lie subalgebra. Okay, here is the definition of Lie subalgebra. So what it is? So a Lie subalgebra of G is first of all a vector subspace so let's call that subalgebra a okay a lie subalgebra a of g is a vector subspace of g that satisfies the following condition
what is that whenever you take two elements x y from that sub algebra then the bracket of that also should be inside that sub algebra okay so that is the condition in particular if you restrict this bracket to a cross a so then you will be getting a map from a cross a to a so this is uh, naturally a lie algebra homomorphism so, sorry it is naturally a bilinear map so because of this condition it actually says a with this restricted bracket defines lie algebra structure okay so that is uh, naturally sub algebra are defined so now we will come to our example so we have this glnc c so now what we will do we define uh, this subspace which will be denoted by sln c what are this this is those matrices from m and c such that the trace of that matrix should be zero so this is the set of all n by n trace less matrices over complex numbers okay and it is easy to check this sl and c is indeed a lie sub algebra of glnc okay so here are some other uh, interesting sub algebra of glnc okay so this is my third example so here is the fourth example okay you take this b and c which is again inside g l and c what is this b and c so this is just the set of all n by n upper triangular matrices okay this is the set of all n by n upper triangular matrices over complex numbers okay so this basically looks like so upper triangular means on the diagonal you should have star these are all zero and then this is okay so this is how they are they look like again this is actually a sub algebra i will leave it as exercise prove that b and c is a sub algebra of glnc so from the context it's clear i am talking about lie sub algebra similarly the fifth example so this is 4 this is 5 you can also take strictly upper triangular matrices okay take this n and c so this is again german small n okay so this is you take it to be the set of all n by n strictly upper triangular matrices over complex numbers okay again it's easy to prove 
So, this is subalgebra of B and C and which is subalgebra of G and C. Okay. So, here is another interesting uh, subalgebra. So, which denoted by this D and C. So, this is the set of all diagonal matrices in M and C. Okay. Again, this is also a subalgebra. So, this is sitting inside N and C that is sorry, this is sitting inside B and C. This is also a subalgebra. Okay, so we have given uh, various interesting subalgebras. Okay, so we will see actually uh, in this course. So what are all the smaller dimensional Lie algebras? So for example, I would actually try to classify uh, all. Uh, Lie algebras of smaller dimension up to let us say dimension 3 that is that already gives you like a very good uh, grip on many many examples. Okay. So, yeah. So, now uh, let us move on. So, again like uh, I will add more examples on the way. Okay. So, now uh, I, I, I believe I have given already enough examples. We will also see later some important uh, 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 important uh, Lie algebras. Okay, so that will come later. Not a problem. Now let us try to understand Lie algebras from this uh, vector space point of view. Okay, so then we can actually make uh, some uh, interesting statements uh, about uh, the Lie algebra. Okay, using some basis of that Lie algebra. Okay. So, let us let us try to understand the vector space structure. So, you take G to be a Lie algebra over complex numbers. Okay. So, as I said we always assume G to be finite dimensional. Okay. So, the dimension of G over complex number you assume to be n and then say x1 etc xn so this is the basis of this lie algebra g okay so like i said okay so what we are interested in we are interested in understanding the structure of this given lie algebra okay so because uh, if you remember our motivation if you start with uh, an associative subalgebra of m1 of c by defining the commutative bracket on that we make that associative subalgebra as Lie algebra. If we understand the Lie algebra structure on that, that more or less tells uh, like uh, how far it is actually stay away from being commutative and so on. Okay. So, the Lie structure in some sense gives some informative ideas about the al associative algebra structure. Okay. So, that is why uh, we, we are interested in actually understanding the structure of uh, this given Lie algebra. So, for that, so from the linear algebra point of view what we can do? We can start with a basis of this uh, Lie algebra and then try to understand how one can use this basis to understand this Lie algebra structure. So, recall what is this uh, Lie algebra structure, the Lie algebra structure comes from the Lie bracket from G cross G to G. So, if you are interested in understanding this uh, Lie bracket on entire G uh, using the bilinearity, it is enough to understand what happens to these elements x i x j. Okay. 
So, suppose if you can understand uh, what is this uh, x i x j uh, in terms of again uh, in terms of x case because x case form a basis then more or less you understand what is this Lie bracket. Once you understand the Lie bracket then you understand the structure of Lie algebras. Okay. So, that means this x i x j you can write it as this a k i j x k where k is varying from 1 to n. So, to understand this bracket it is enough to understand these complex numbers a k i j. So, they are called structure constants. Okay. So, to understand the bracket it is enough to understand the bracket x i x j using the bilinearity. So, that is actually boiled down to understanding these numbers the structure constant. the structure constants a i j k. So, these structure constants they depend very much on the basis different basis will in general give different structure constants. But now uh, we have these two conditions skew symmetric and Jacobi identity and then these conditions will actually give some constraint on this structure constants. For example, using the skew symmetric which says x i x j is nothing but minus x j x i and this is true for all i j less between 1 and 1 and n. So, then this implies it is sufficient to know the structure constants only for 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n and 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to. So, if we know structure constants for this particular indices so, then we know for all indices okay, that is what skew symmetric implies. I will leave it as exercise uh, to work it out what will be the constraint on this structure constants using the Jacobi identity. Okay. Write down the conditions on these structure constants that you get from Jacobi identity. Okay, it is a very interesting exercise you should actually try to do. But uh, you can actually think about it once you know this uh, structure constants uh, which you know for these indices and then whatever the conditions that actually you get it from the Jacobi identity if the those conditions are all satisfied then it is not very difficult to define uh, the Lie algebra structure on this given G. Okay. So, it goes in both direction, but the problem is <coughs> you can see for larger dimension n you need lots and lots of information. So, this uh, structure constants uh, can be very arbitrary and the conditions that uh, you get from this Jacobi identity they do not look that pleasant. Okay. 
So, determining the Lie algebras just using structure constants more or less impossible problem. Okay. So, now I will uh, end with this lecture by giving uh, some more basic uh, definitions. So, we actually seen the definition of uh, Lie algebra and it is a sub algebra. So, now we define what is called uh, homomorphism uh, in this uh, category of Lie algebras. Okay. <clears throat> so, here is the definition of homomorphisms. So, to define homomorphism we need two uh, Lie algebras to begin with. <coughs> so, let G G dash be two Lie algebras defined over same C. <coughs> A homomorphism phi from G to G dash is a linear map because it should actually obey the linear structure which is the vector space structure that satisfies the following condition. So, what is that condition? That condition is that both it should preserve the Lie algebra structure. Okay. So, phi of x y should be equal to bracket phi of x phi of y for all x y in G. So, now <coughs> once we define homomorphism, it is not hard to define what is isomorphism. So, <coughs> what is isomorphism? So, isomorphism from one Lie algebra G to another Lie algebra G dash is first of all a homomorphism which is also bijective. Okay. A bijective Lie homomorphism from G to G dash is called Lie isomorphism. So, from the context it will be clear whether we talk about Lie algebra homomorphism or Lie algebra isomorphism and so on. So, because of that we always ignore this uh, adjective Lie. Okay. So, I will actually leave it as exercise. So, if you have a bijective homomorphism from G to G dash, so that is an isomorphism. So, then you can define what is called inverse of that map and one can prove that inverse must be again Lie algebra homomorphism. Okay. Suppose phi is from G to G dash is an isomorphism, then this phi inverse which is defined from G to G dash which is a map okay, that is defined because the phi is bijective. So, this is again a Lie so, because of this exercise we do not demand phi inverse being again Lie homomorphism, it automatically is satisfied. So, that is what most of the time happens in algebra, even if you take uh, this groups, rings, even vector spaces all this bijective homomorphism will become like <clears throat> the inverse will become homomorphism in that particular category.
Okay, so here are some uh, Im other important uh, maps that one can associate with this uh, Lie algebras. So I will end with uh, that one more definition. What are called derivations? So, <clears throat> what is derivation? So, let us define derivation for any algebra. Okay. So, we have defined this associative algebra and we have seen this Lie algebra. Okay. So, if you take these two definitions, if you think about it, both of them are vector spaces having some product in it. Okay. And if they further satisfy some conditions, then you call it uh, okay, call them like either associative algebra or Lie algebra. So, in that sense, we can actually define what is called algebra over complex numbers. Okay. So, what is algebra over complex number? On algebra over complex number is a vector space together with a product. Okay. And that product uh, should satisfy that compatibility condition between the scalar multiplication and this new product. Okay. So, it should satisfy the following condition with the product satisfying the condition like if you take alpha x composition y. So, this is this product. So, this is this scalar multiplication. So, then this should be equal to alpha x y and same as x into alpha y for all alpha in c x y in whatever the algebra that you started with let us call it capital E. So, here we are not assuming anything about this product. Okay. This product may not be associative, may not be commutative. Okay. So, it is just a product that is defined on A cross A. So, that is just a map from A cross A to A. So, now one can define derivation on any algebra. Okay. So, what is the derivation? Suppose A is an algebra over complex numbers. So, that means you have <coughs> addition and you have multiplication and you have scalar multiplication. So, this is addition and this is the product or multiplication and this is scalar multiplication. Okay. And A plus this dot, this is a vector space and this uh, product that satisfies the condition that I have written here. The product and dot satisfies star. So, that is what I mean algebra. Okay. <clears throat> so, now what is the derivation? So, derivation is a map from A to A, a derivation, let us call it D, is a map from A to A. First of all, it should be a linear map. over C. So, all the maps should be linear okay? that is the underlying assumption because all of all the objects that we consider they are all vector spaces. The second condition <coughs> it should it should satisfy what is called Leibniz rule. Okay? D of A B should be equal to A D of B 
plus d of a b okay and this should be true for all a b in capital a. So, this condition is called Leibniz rule so which you must have seen in calculus okay the same condition must be true for this derivations. So, now if you write this definition for the Lie algebra then you can see the conditions look as follows. So, G is let us say the Lie algebra over C the derivation from G to G is first of all a linear map and satisfies the condition 2 which is what D of A B, A B is bracket A B now because that is the product <coughs> then that should be equal to D A B plus A D for all A B in G. Okay. So, your derivation is a linear map satisfy this condition okay that is the condition i wrote here so this is uh, adb plus dab and uh, it's not very hard to see okay these maps are because of the they are all linear maps so if you collect all these maps you call it d or derivations of g so, what is this? This is those maps from endomorphism of G such that D is a derivation. So, this is a vector subspace of endomorphism of G. Okay. So, this is defined over complex numbers. So, what is endomorphism of G? So, this is the set of all linear maps from G to G. So, where endomorphism of G, okay, this is the set of all C linear maps from G to G. Okay. And uh, I will leave it as exercise this uh, derivation g is a vector subspace of g, vector subspace of endomorphism of g. <coughs> we will see later some interesting properties of this uh, derivations of g. So, now I will actually give you some important examples so that comes from uh, the definition of Lie algebra. Okay. So, if I take g which is Lie algebra then what I can do given element x in g one can define the following map. So, what is that map? That map will be denoted by add x which is a map from g to g. So, this is defined by add x of y is given to be x y and this is for all y in g. So, it is easy to see this add x is a linear map and it is also a derivation. Okay. So, what is the meaning of this being derivation? Let us just spell it out. So, add x if you apply it on y z. Okay. So, then what do you need to get? You need to get this is equal to bracket add x applied on y comma z plus y add x applied on z. So, that is the meaning of derivation. Okay. But what is on the <coughs> left side? 
So, this is just bracket x bracket y z ok, but what is on the right side? The first term it is bracket x y and then bracket z and the second term bracket y and then bracket x z. If you go back to the Jacobi identity, you can see that this is just a Jacobi identity written in different way. Okay. So, what is Jacobi identity? The Jacobi identity is bracket x bracket y z is plus bracket y bracket z x plus bracket z bracket x y should be 0. Okay, that is the Jacobi identity. So, then if you keep the first term on the right left side and then take the remaining term on the right left side uh, sorry right side then you get something like this. But now if you use this uh, <coughs> skew symmetric property then this is same as y minus x z minus x y z. So, this will, will become plus and this will become plus and this just vanishes. Okay. So, that means bracket x y z is equal to bracket y x z plus bracket x y z. So, that is what we have written here. Okay. This is the term second term bracket x y and then z. So, that matches with this. Okay. So, sorry. <coughs> so, this term matches with this term and this term matches with this term. Okay. So, in a way what we are saying this Jacobi B identity is nothing but this add x being derivation. Okay. Jacobi B identity is equivalent to add x being equivalent to add x being derivation. So, if you think about Jacobi identity, so as an algebraist I would always recommend you to think in terms of this derivations. Okay. So, that is the best way to actually remember the Jacobi identity. So, now if we actually uh, use this add x, so then you will be able to define another map called add map or the adjoint map from G to this endomorphism of G. Okay. So, what is that map? So, that is the map that actually sends x to add x okay. and then I will leave it as exercise this add map that we have defined okay, which is called adjoint map. Maybe you can denote it by add G just to emphasize G. So, this is called a joint map and this ma joint map is a linear map. Okay. It is actually more than linear map because this endomorphism of G can be made into Lie algebra okay, because endomorphism of G is an associative algebra by defining composition as multiplication. Okay. So, then if you actually fix a basis of G then it is naturally isomorphic to M n of C. So, if you take that uh, multiplication and then associative algebra structure and then using the commutator bracket if you define Lie algebra structure then this becomes actually Lie algebra. So, this Lie algebra again is called general linear algebra and this is denoted by G L of G. Okay. So, this is again called 
general linear Lie algebra and I will leave it as exercise. It is not hard to prove G L of G is isomorphic to G L n of C if n is the dimension of G. Okay. So, now it is not hard to see the map add map that we define from G to uh, G L of G is actually a Lie algebra homomorphism. Okay. I will stop here and we will continue in the next class. So, I will actually define some more uh, basic objects that will be useful later in the course and then we will study some more basic properties of Lie algebras in the next class. I will stop here.